boom, like a Métis cart, we're off again. Or I guess I could say like a, like a Métis wheel, the wheel's coming off again. Or maybe like a squeaky wheel, Lawrence, something's coming off again. Either way, Lawrence, 61. You know, I think only one other podcast in the history of man has gotten past 60. Joe Rogan? Um, yeah, I think it might have been Joe Rogan. So right. I'm pretty sure I haven't looked any of this up, and I'm quite confident that if I was to look it up, um, I might be incorrect. But if, if it's up to me, if I was the one who was making the rules right now, I would say you and I and Joe Rogan, probably the only people who have done this many podcasts. <laughs> yeah. So thank you to all of our listeners. Folks, with me as always is my very good friend, as it often gets commented on as I make this in our show, is the President Lawrence Gervais. And folks, I'm Ross Memphis Pambrin. I'm the CEO of the Memphis Group. Love that you always look us up. Thank you for sharing your conversation and connection with us and that you bring your weekly attention to what's happening in the world of the Métis community, our Métis families and friends, our relationships with First Nations. Thank you for bringing the conversations to us and your emails. And thank you to all of our subscribers and definitely to everybody now who's listening on all the different socials that we have out there, including our friends this time all throughout on iTunes. We really appreciate it. And thank you for following us on our email as you watch, as we move forward, you'll see a little bit more information from our team behind the crew. Lawrence, number 61. We have a number of things we're going to banter about. I know we're going to talk about the Pope again, because that seems to be one of those ones. It's hard to get away from it when you consider how uh, important this, perp this, this individual is to the Catholic community and to the, the strength of, of gathering and connection around the world. We're going to talk about... Um, some some candidacy issues uh supply chain sports we had the gray cup that just happened literally ending very uh shortly before the show like to bang a little bit of information around about that some of the challenges to the world right now bc and the and the and the tornadoes for our you know for the tragedies for our, our family and friends down down below us in the u.s we're going to talk more metis talk about some christmas and we will have our usual scam conversation so lawrence let's jump into a few things because of um for time and you know just keep things tight for our listeners let's talk a little bit about the pope yeah um he, well he you know we we did have to cancel the the papal visit because of the omicron um yep. variant um, so, you know, we just making sure that our elders are protected because those are the ones that are kind of the ones traveling over there and certainly don't want to create an issue in going all the way to Italy and back. So, and this was us sending our folks there. This was not That's him right. coming or the other, the, the other steps that are happening. Yeah. This was the time that we were sending everybody over. Yeah. And, you know, with the help of certainly the, the, uh, the Catholic bishops here and the archbishops and stuff to kind of lead the way and, and, uh, you know, um, certainly it would have been the first sort of initial pre-meeting uh, with the Pope, hopefully. But, um, you know, you never know. Um, now that it is canceled, hopefully he'll come here um, and meet with all of us directly. So we'll see. Should should he send a Zoom over? Should he just send a, <laughs> a uh, hey, here's my recent update. Should he do... How about this, Lawrence? I'm just throwing this out here as an idea. Folks, if any of you out there have relationship with the Pope, more so than just the time you spend in prayer, uh, and he's interested in being on the squeaky wheel, folks, make sure you send <laughs> along our information. That's This would be this would be, be one of the avenues that I'd like to see him jump on. Yeah. I mean, we had Ward Sutherland, and then, you know, of course, the Pope, you know, would just probably just <laughs> yeah, be above him. So. Absolutely. Yeah. The uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to get an email response to that or any of these kind of conversations. <laughs> Nowadays, uh, honestly, the one of the sad things is that too often... Uh, and, and we've always said even any media is good media, right? It brings attention. And I don't necessarily agree with that. You know, I think morally we need to, you know, we're not trying to shock people here on the squeaky wheel. We're trying to make sure that we have uh, intelligent, somewhat humorous conversation, try to be realistic. So yes, for any of you um, haters out there, please keep those comments to yourself. But if you want to send us anything where you want to be a part of that conversation, love to have it. Send it to tsw at thesqueakywheel.ca. Um, going into that conversation about bad or good media, and this is a bit of a jump off to something, um, that actor, Jesse Smollett, right? He was the guy who ended up, it sounds like they have decided he was guilty. He staged his own hate crime yeah. in order to bring attention to himself. And, you know, no parties that he seems to be associated with are there to stand up for him. No, I mean, yeah, it would be really tough to really kind of defend 
a person like that in your community. Yeah. And um, yeah, uh, if you if you ha- you come from, I mean, he was saying that his hate crime was because he was black, and then it was yeah. because he was gay, and you know, a bunch of things, right? So, yeah. Um, and then of course they found the two hitmen and and had to yeah. charge them, who, and who he had been having drinks and gone out for evenings with. Sure yeah. doesn't seem as though that they were too against uh, him. And yes, he's d- definitely done a disservice culturally. He's done a disservice to the LGBT community. He, he's doing a, he, such a disservice to any aspect of honesty. The all in the name. And, you know, I can only imagine what the pressures are like at his level in order to try and gain fame and the people who are riding his coattails. But folks, you know, the more libel, the more things you put up on social medias that are conflicting you know in the end those those are just those are harsh those are hard um rude comments to in any conversation you're not being a positive yeah. part of an agenda and i think for me you know with his story if he he was doing it for fame and and possibly to get a job well he already had a job he yes. was already working at empire and he was already doing that television series to to actually do that was a little bit, you know, out of the norm, um, expecting some sympathy result that he would get probably more work in. I don't, nobody really knows. Right. Yeah, no. And that's just part of his journey. And unfortunately, uh, it affects his career, his career. And you know, the judge, um, the judges and, and, and the rest of us who are trying to judge the moral action, um, that will, that will befall him and carry for a long time. Let's jump into a couple things too that'll lead us down a little bit of the Métis route because there's something fun I wanted to ask you about that we, that we were chatting about a little earlier. But um, this is a stressful time. This is Christmas. Folks, realize that however your relationship is with Christmas and your family, if you're with somebody, they have a family too. So understand that there are many people involved in our in the Christmas time. You know, pull the reins back a little bit and ask, who am I, you know, who am I getting engaged with? What am I doing this for? So that you're there to celebrate any opportunity you get to be with family or see family. And this is a very difficult time. And and one of the things I wanted to ask you, Lawrence, we were talking, um, the winter dances. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, you know, in our community, you know, we haven't seen that certainly in quite a while. Um, I don't mm-hmm. think my generation even practiced it, but, you know, there was, and I wouldn't call them winter dances, that's kind of a First Nation term, but, you know, our, our families would gather during the winter, um, usually around the, the new year, and and that was the time when they would, you know, possibly meet their mate, you know, certainly for <clears throat> the year or so, and and uh, certainly those traditional marriages were kind of established during the winter and then they would have their marriages, you know, probably in the summer. Right. So, mm-hmm. you know, we don't really practice that as a culture because we're, you know, certainly very urbanized now, but, you know, back in the days, it was very common to have, to have that was as a the, ceremony. Was the Métis kitchen party essentially the swipe left or swipe right <laughs> of today's generation? Maybe that's what it was, Lawrence. Maybe this was the, you know, and I, and I joke and I jest, but you know, at the time, like any good dance, you wear your best outfit and you go there with a smile on your face and you look around to see who's in the room and hopefully create a connection. Yeah. We, we hear stories about, you know, these giant sleds with the, you know, everybody's all dressed up in their, in their best and going out to a, a dance during the winter and, and, uh, you know, hopefully not meeting their cousin. Um, because that would have been <laughs> a terrible situation, but um, you yeah. know, certainly is very common too. I don't know. So the you know that's that's funny, and and for all you young kids who are listening out there, you know, uh, you you brought up something that was really neat. In the time when you went to these dances, this was a time where, um, you know, you you got to be in a room with people and. You got to enjoy the music. You got to enjoy the spirit. And the idea, as, as you brought up, I it's been a long time since I've been on a winter sled ride. Mm-hmm. And imagine this, young fellas and ladies, that, you know, your opportunity was maybe after you've after you've arrived at the dance by by cart or by team 
or maybe you did, you know, have a vehicle that dropped you off there and you just needed a little bit of privacy. You might go and climb on one of these wintertime sleds, yeah. probably had hay, hay bales on it. And that was just a few moments where you could go for a ride in the snow. How romantic. This is not the kind of things that we see anymore that, you know, we try to create as, as an opportunity for to people to, just to hold hands and have a reason to stay warm. But yeah, how fun must that have been? Well, there's a presumption that people use the carts, you know, during the winter, but no, they, they use sleds and usually with dogs, right? So, right, um, <clears throat> you know, that was car, kind of the Métis uh, way of doing things and we just traveled around, but. And in the wintertime, most of your work had been done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you use the big horses, your big horses probably to pull snow and, you know, because they didn't have snow blowers back then. So they would yeah. create these little sleds that would just capture the snow and just push it you know, and then grab a next batch and then push everything. Right. So that was kind of the normal thing to do. Right. Right. That's how we're clean in the pathway in order for everybody to, to, you know, to be able to make their way wherever they had to get to. Yeah. But I mean, the winter camp was looking different than it was during a summer camp. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's stay on this vein of a few things of, of regarding the Métis because we have, uh, new candidates in this province. Oh, we do. So, we have elections that are going to be coming up in next November. September. And I understand, or September, sorry. There, we have somebody now who are starting to step forward for some of the provincial positions of president. Yeah. I mean, I only know one person that's really stepping up. I haven't really heard of the incumbent, Audrey, but she doesn't really let us know until usually the summer before the election, but. Yeah. And you know, again, I always, I always respect the, the, the role of voting that, you know, you, that ensures you reconnect with the community. I mean, Audrey, who's been a guest on our show has been in this position for a considerable time, could won a considerable number of awards. And I'm the last person to suggest we require any change. If we have somebody who listens, if we have somebody who represents, if we have somebody who's engaged in the community yeah. and has that awareness, you know, utmost respect again, um, you, you're an elected official. You have stuck your neck out many times, Lawrence, in order to, uh, you know, be leadership of the populace of our citizenship and taking the brunt of it. So, you know, good on these people. It's, it's a tough journey. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, but you know, our community is very fairly minded when it comes to, to voting and, um, certainly the ones that, you know, have this Trump style sort of tactic and they just attack and, it doesn't usually bode well, um, and for rightful reasons, it, you know, we really have to be careful on who we elect to. It's it's kind of especially for the province that, you know, it's somebody who is like you said engaged with all of the communities, um, mm -hmm. number one, and who's also you know kind of respectful for previous leadership too. So you can't sit there and just attack, attack, attack an organization. Um, and say, I'm going to lead the change and I'm going to lead the charge because it's a, there's a lot more work than that when it comes down to it. Yeah. Those individuals who have led before were working with, you know, the tools they had, the people that they had and the awareness that they had, right? You can't blame somebody 30 years ago if they had no awareness of residential schools for understanding how it should have been tackled. We need to continue to move forward and find people who who have the strength to move us forward in a positive way and who are willing to step up. Yeah. And also the people that would, would complain about something, they weren't there, right? Yeah. They'll complain about it. They, they weren't there to make the change. And usually that change is around assembly time. Right. Yeah. And, and if you don't show up to the assembly and you, you're still saying this and saying that, well then, you know, you know, it takes a leader to actually show up and make the vote and convince the change there because that's when the change happens is at the assembly. It's not on Facebook. It's not anywhere else. I think, um, you know, Elvis had it very, very close to being correct where he said, don't criticize what you don't understand. You never walked in that man's shoes. Now, if he had said you never walked in that man or woman's shoes, that now it would have been a little more appropriate, but I've never walked in Audrey's shoes. <laughs> And I'm generally not good at high heels. I can guarantee that. But the, um, you know, walking in anybody's shoes. Yeah, there's a big responsibility. And if you're willing to tackle it, then you try it out. Absolutely. Um, and, it, you know, it's not a perfect system. Nobody expects it to be. And 
So, right. you know, if you want to make the change, you know, make the, you know, you don't have to argue your way there. That's not the purpose of this job. This job yeah. is to support the MET, at least, you know, through the organization administratively as best we can. So then we can get the services and programs to the people. That's the main yeah. objective. It's not about me or her or anybody else. It's about the people. It should yeah. be. And, and hopefully through conversation, right? Because that's what representation is. Let's stay on the vein of some of the other things that are happening. Let's talk regionally or uh, yeah, let's talk regionally. Let's talk locally. Yeah. Um, you know, I think now's the time where we get into that realm. I mean, last year where we start to communicate with our members on stuff that we've done over the last year, and it's really hard for COVID, you know, that's why yeah. this podcast is based on for us to communicate with them. But, you know, we've, we've gotten more COVID supports. We've given them to the locals. We gave them on a percentage of membership. Uh, we've done what we can as a region to support the the locals as best we can in a fair manner. Um, mm -hmm. So hopefully the locals can you know do the work and and we can get to the the, the steps that we're supposed to and and um, if they don't, well then certainly we'll you know as a region sort of be asking them questions as we go along. But um, I have faith. You know it, the thing is that you, sometimes you have to let the cart go and not yeah. kind of guide it. Because this is something the community wants. They want that sort of responsibility. Then you kind of sometimes have to give it to them. And more rural communities will have a bit a bit of a different ask than yeah. the larger, you know, city city communities. So I agree. I, I think and for a lot of our listeners out there who don't have all these, the same awareness, in this province, for example, we have six regions. Lawrence is the president of Region 6. Three. Um, <laughs> region three, sorry, I got caught up because I said six, um, yeah. and I and that number's caught in my head because we have six locals. So yes, you're gonna have to play the lottery with sixes on there. Oh, yeah, I gotta go play the lottery. I'm glad you got the number right, Lawrence. How many times <laughs> have I said it on the show? But once you get into a train of mind, you all of a sudden make that mistake. The um, yeah, so we have that, and and each of these locals, which has their representation, there's different you know asks out of each one of these groups, and and that's where when the when when they're um, you know, elected leadership needs to bring information to the regional level that comes to Lawrence and Lawrence, you carry it further up the line. The, because yes, there's, there has been COVID funding that's been, you know, been doled out and it is your responsibility to, you know, be a part of maintaining the awareness so that everybody has an idea that it's being utilized. Yeah. There's been five installments altogether. You know, we started with Rupert's land at the very beginning and then the m and was getting more federal dollars, federal dollars, federal dollars, but we do have a requirement and when we give it out, it has to be COVID related, you know? So people who are suffering because of employment or suffering because they got sick from it or, you know, just different ways that we can um, certainly get to those people to get them sports, hampers, grocery cards, you name it, just different type of stuff. Yeah. And folks, the things that you require from your community, you have to make sure you bring forward so that it becomes aware. Same as I tell everybody on this show. When you're a guest here, you have to let us know what it is you might like to talk about because we're going to have our questions. And folks, for all our listeners out there, you make sure you send those requests to us. Um, uh, identity, Lawrence, seems like it's continuing to step up as a, you know, something that's happening within the Métis community, uh, within all Indigenous communities. Let's talk a little bit about more about what's happening with that. Well, I mean, you know, identity is so important to us and and especially us Métis because we have a lot of people that don't have their their membership or, uh, you know, or don't go through the steps of actually um, crossing those dots before they go look for employment. And it's up to sometimes the schools or the academia or, you know, institutions like that to really say, well, is this person Métis on my staff? Or is this student who's getting Métis scholarship dollars are they Métis? And he kind of put the iotas on the institutions to kind of get there. But, you know, what's starting to change is now they're starting to work with the nations to kind of certify those registrations. So, you know, that's a good thing. You know, they, they'll go to a Métis Nation of Saskatchewan. They set up their own agreement with the university there in 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 S S Saskatoon, right? So, <clears throat> right. yeah. And now they can actually have a place in a vehicle to go, yes, m and it, are these people registered in your registry? And MNS, it will be up to MNS to actually say yes or no, right? Or they're in the process. And if they really want to self identify, then they can actually go, well, they have a cousin who has their card or a brother or sister or whoever, right? 
Okay, so it just makes things a little bit quicker for the schools to actually verify that these Métis people are there. You know, we need these tools. And I'd like to think that at some point, if we're engaging groups like the universities, as they continue to band together to come up with the best strategy, right? These should be some of our smartest minds working on this. Um, you know, we can start, let's let's call it a, a, you know, a respectful registry that will help the process along. And for those people who are searching out going, um, I'd like to understand more about my genealogy. I'd like to understand more about my history, my family history, that there'll be more access to new tools to have better understanding of the lineage. Mm -hmm. That's right. So it's not just about validation. It's also about, you know, creating better tools to increase our opportunities for awareness. L Lawrence, the, the light's flashing. You know what that means? No. It's scary. <laughs> I should have, hold on here. La, la, <laughs> I got to put one of these. This is like the, the beer light that comes on. You know, it should come on more when the Oilers score. But folks, the red light's flashing and this is scam time. Uh, Lawrence, I wanted to bring up one of the scams that happens out there. I know you know what that light means. But for our listeners who are not watching our video at this time, we're just listening. The red light means we're going to talk about one of the scams. And this is for everybody out there. Um, this has been at this time of the year, fake charities. It is extremely important, folks, that you, you know, you ask these difficult questions. If you're getting phone calls, if anybody's pressuring you to donate at that time, um, you want to ask them a little bit more, ask them about where the website is. And if they say they're representing a specific charity, you know, not to offend anybody, I'm going to say the Vulcan charity. You want to ask them, where can I go to a website to verify this information? I know the CRA Canada Revenue Agency has the site where you can go to that also verifies if they're incorporated so that the the funding the funding dollars are being utilized appropriately. But it's much like when somebody comes to our door, just because they come to the door and say they're with a charity, how do we vet them? Is there a number we could call? Do we want to, we need to verify that there's actually a campaign that's going on at this time. Otherwise, you just put yourself at risk. And Lawrence, this, this you must come across situations like this where you, you know, people have come to your door saying, hey, here's who I represent, but they don't really carry any credential. Uh, and if they, and even if they do carry credential, it needs to be your comfort. You come across this? Yeah, we had a, a group of ringette players came to the door looking for bottles and I harassed them and said, where's your <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I didn't do yeah, that. Um, <laughs> you're throwing bottles at them. <laughs> um, I, well, actually I have. I mean, we all have. I think, if, you know, yeah. we can go through our junk folder right now in any email and see where all the scams are. There'll probably be about 10 or 15 just waiting for you right now. 100%. And Lord, don't steal my thunder, Lawrence. This was this was my contribution to the show. No, the you're absolutely right. But yes, um, th this is what has befallen us. Yeah, exactly. And I think this time of year, people pray on it or they'll they'll pray during tax season, right? And say yeah. the Revenue Canada or certain times of the year, right? And, and when we are feeling at our most charitable, and that's when it becomes very hard. We don't. So folks, make sure you ask and ask them, if they don't give you an appropriate website where you can go and vet the information to see where their dollars go, then you may not want to look for the registered charities or ask somebody what charities that they contribute to. Have they done some of the same work? Because you may be interested and reach out to that organization. There's that's the better way rather than being um, pressured into it. If you ever feel pressured, pull the reins back and say, you know, at this time, I feel a little bit uncomfortable with continuing any further and and then leave it at that. And in an email too, you know, look at the sender, right? Yeah. So hit on the sender and you'll see their email. And if it's a mile long and it's a different language or there's spelling mistakes, it's usually not legit. You're right. It's absolutely, it's not legitimate. And yeah. we, and you don't want to fall prey to it because, you know, they, they continue to prey on you. And if you, if you give them any information, then they try to, you know, take it a little further and hold, and then you don't want to end up down the identity theft route. Uh, supply chain, Lawrence, we're running out of time. The let's talk about the supply chain, BC yeah. and the unique challenge. Now that we've are losing the roadways for our, our, our dear truckers who are bringing us everything of value and everything we don't need. Um, Christmas trees. I don't know if you ran into this, but, uh, they said early on, it's going to be hard. And I was out looking the other day. Oh, price has gone up and there's nothing available. Really? But you're talking about fake trees or real trees? This was a real tree. 
Really? Because we got a lot it's up where I am. Real trees. Oh, I need you to go and have a look, man. <laughs> and you, t I will be there tomorrow. I've made that commitment to my family that I'll be on my way to ensure that I get one. So Lawrence, you better be sending me back a picture sometime tomorrow that these things are available. Uh, as we talk about our supply chain, and this is what helps move us all across Canada, the football game. Lawrence, right. who were you cheering for? Well, I mean, parts of me w was cheering for Calgary, but they weren't there. So <laughs> okay. um, was the other parts part of me, of you. <laughs> the other parts of me, I guess, were cheering for um, Winnipeg, right? I, I spent some time growing up in Winnipeg, so that was my, I, I do have to cheer for them. And, you know, it's kind of see, kind of nice for them to actually do it again. And then, you know, they lost a lot of uh, that momentum because COVID was the next year and they couldn't really celebrate the next year. So, you know, now they can. That's right. They won in 2019 against the Thai Cats, and they just won again. Oh, in Thai Cat land in yeah. Iverwin in in Hamilton, they lost. Oh, Tim Hortons, I guess, is what it is now. But they, um, yeah, poor Thai Cats lost again, two in a row. Yeah, but I mean, I think you know, it was that kick return? The guys in the end zone and didn't bother running and gave Winnipeg the extra point, and then they tied it and ended up winning. So it was kind of it was a funny game. I got a little bit confused as to why some of the plays were happening there. And then when they kicked that field goal to tie the game, I'm like, oh boy, we're going into overtime. And which is one of the things that I do love about CFL football. That's how great we are as Canadians. Each team gets the opportunity. <laughs> this isn't like the Americans. If you go down and get a touchdown, the game's over. No, no. Everybody gets a chance to play. Yeah, it's very fair. It's like the way we are, right? But it could uh, be cut cutthroat, but whatever. Yeah, if we if we changed our game a little bit, we'd we'd end up being a little bit more cutthroat. But the um, you know, big prayers to our um, you know, the families down south in Kentucky where these tornadoes just whatever, the storms, the uh we ask ourselves, are we seeing climate change? Are we seeing climate warming? Are we seeing well, folks, you know, you look at the flooding, you look at the, the you know, the changes that are happening within our the type of storms that we're having, the challenges. I don't know what you want to call it, but I call it a, uh, it's, it's a, a tough time when you're on the receiving end of mother nature's batter and she beats you down. Yeah. And I'm glad, you know, you know, we're kind of safe here because we're so close to the mountains, you know, on this side, mm -hmm. but you know, you worry about family members in Saskatchewan and those places where those tornadoes can whip up a lot of energy and just wipe it, wipe you out. Right. And, and um, if this is a result of climate change, yeah, um, we really have to sort of bear down and on how we're going to deal with that. And, um, and and continue to use science in order to try and help us come up with new strategies on how to protect people. That's right. Um, so, so, but I mean, one thing I wanted to ask you was how, how was the NFR? Because you went down there to Vegas and um, did you see any celebrities? Uh, fabulous. The, you know, here's a funny one. Uh, I, I was going to a viewing party cause we're, we're very conscientious of sort of being in, in very safe. Um, and somebody had said, Oh, these seats were, uh, they were being held for somebody else. No problem. Got up, made my way. I was going to go to a different spot. And this very nice gentleman comes over and he says, listen, I'm not going to stick around, go back there and sit down. You know, it's nice wide open space and enjoy the, enjoy the rodeo. And I looked at my wife and I said that. That sure looked a lot like Bob Tallman. And shortly after that, this gentleman comes by and he goes, hey, do you know whose seats you're sitting in? I said, please tell me they weren't Bob Tallman's seats. <laughs> and he said, as a matter of fact, that was Bob Tallman. I have always wanted to meet that man. Now, in a way, I could say I did. In another way, all it was was a very kind man saying, hey, you don't have to get up. You can stay in those seats. Well, you know, it's interesting because I met Bob you know, at a rodeo when I was younger. And we talked about ballet for about a half hour while his wife sat on in the RV. And me and him just talked about ballet because him and his wife uh, have tickets to the Houston Ballet. And Really? Um, yeah, and he comes up here to Calgary all the time, right? So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now he's not calling as much as he used to. Um, no, he missed you know? last year at the Stampede, yeah. right? So And they didn't pick well, they didn't pick him to do the NFR this year. Oh, really? Um, there's two different announcers. So he still has other roles that he takes within the, the rodeo community. But yeah, uh, I think he's 75. So maybe he's just sort of easing down a little bit. But uh, Lawrence, let's close out our show. One of the, the last things I wanted to bring up was um, 
because we're just at that time anyways, and maybe you can give me an understanding. I have yet to watch Yellowstone, but the new 1883 is technically the prequel. Which one do I start with? You got to start with Yellowstone. Um, you do, okay. Yeah. Uh, the 1883, I'm looking forward to. Um, yeah. And then Sam I'm Elliott. also looking forward to the Game of Thrones one, too. That's, that's a prequel to that, so... You know, they're making all the prequels. As soon as it's a hit, then they have to go back a bunch of sure. years to make Explain some how more. we got here. <laughs> yeah. But no, it's it's good entertainment. It twists and turns. They glorify a lot of things. But certainly that Yellowstone has that cowboy thing to it, which appeals to certain folks. But Oh, 100%. Yeah, I couldn't be happier. I'd just like to start seeing a few more Métis carts in uh, each one of these shows. <laughs> yeah. So, Lawrence, let's close it out there. Thank you so much, as always, folks. Um, make sure you hit subscribe to us. Listen to us on your different on the different devices that we're putting ourselves out. Thank you to our iTunes listeners. Um, uh, make sure you email us, tsw at thesqueakywheel.ca. Follow us on our website, www.thesqueakywheel.ca. You know you can always reach out to Lawrence and I. We're always happy to answer your questions and to bring any of your suggestions into our Indigenous conversation. And as it is, conversation from a Métis perspective. From all of us here, thank you, Leighton, from behind the scenes in order to help uh, continue to build and make our product a little bit stronger. And we certainly enjoy the every aspect of the time that we get to share together and from Mother Earth who shares that with us. So Lawrence, from all of us, from Ross and the Memphis Group, best wishes, folks. Keep the wheel squeaking. The Squeaky Wheel is brought to you by the Squeaky Wheel Company, co-hosted by the President, Lawrence Gervais, Memonet Region 3, and the Captain, Ross Memphis Pamper. Our program is broadcast from Calgary, in Region 3 of the Métis Nation of Alberta, which is part of the historic Métis Nation homeland. We also acknowledge these lands are the traditional territories of Treaty 7, like the Confederacy, Sitka, Kainai, Gandhi, Lutsina, and Stony Nakoda, with whom we share this land on the basis of our historical and ongoing relationships. You can always reach us for comment about our programming by email at tsw at thesqueakywheel.ca or find us on our website, www.squeakywheel.ca and our socials. For our comments, it is our focus to recognize all of our First Nations and Indigenous friends, share connection with Métis settlements, and listen to and show respect to our Métis brothers and sisters and families. Here at the Squeaky Wheel, we give thanks to our elders for their guidance and to Mother Earth for her time she allows us to be here and share her bounty. From all of us at the Squeaky Wheel, Tanzee.